Agile FM Radio for the Agile Community. www.agile.fm. Thank you for tuning in to the Agile FM podcast, and today I have a guest with me, Andrea Cho.、Uh, that is, at, her Twitter handle is Andrea, and I spell that one out: C H I O U. She is based out of Virginia. And she has、uh, quite a slogan on her website, which is a very deep one, dedicated to bring effectiveness and joy to the workplace. And I want to talk、um, about a very interesting topic: clean language with her.、Um, that is not about, you know,、uh, the the lack of profanities or anything. There's something very, very different. And、uh, well, first, first of all, welcome to the podcast, Andrea. Thank you, Johan. Glad to be.、Awesome. Glad to have you, and、uh, I want to talk about clean language. We want to keep it clean here today.、Um, what what does clean language? Not everybody, including myself, until recently, was familiar with that term、um, in in the space of communication, in particular.、Uh, what does clean language refer to? Where does it come from? Oh, sure.、Um, well, there are two quest two separate questions there. One is what is it,、um, and it's very very simple.、Um, On the surface, it's a set of questions that are、um, uh, simple to learn and、um, go together to form a sort of therapeutic model for helping people、um, to improve, to change, to get what they want.、Uh-huh. Um, it comes from the field of psychotherapy. It was developed by a man named David Grove. He was、uh, from New Zealand and came to the U.S. to study、um, in the 70s and 80s, and then had a very successful career doing what he did.、Mm-hmm. And it's now branched over into business uses because、um, it was so effective with helping people to change. And so, coaches and other people in service industries,、um, even small business entrepreneurs, have found it. Transformative in creating a culture of, of inquiry and of mutual support and of dialogue.、Mm. So、uh, if I if I I looked up this topic right and it's it says something about not leading questions, no bias.、Um, so it's a it's a technique. Is, yes. Is that a, a fair under,、uh, understanding of of the technique? There are specific questions. Those questions are being. Trained,、um, so facilitators like you, you would be trained in in the techniques, and you would relay that kind of、uh, communication into teams. Yes, you would train teams how to use the questions themselves. In fact,、um, and so、um, it's the questions are formed with blanks. When you first learn them, you're looking at questions like this one: What kind of blank? Is that、mm-hmm. so?、Um, you might presume to know exactly what they mean by that. Yeah. But you might get yourself into a lot of trouble presuming that your definition is the same as theirs. Right. So what what the clean questions do, and there are about ten of them, ten to twelve, depending. And there's a bunch of specialist questions as well. But when you first learn, you're learning about ten or twelve questions.、Um, is that they tr- they do they train your attention on the thinking space of the other person,、mm-hmm. such that so like instead of responding to bring your own ideas, your own advice, or your first reaction into a conversation, you can get clarification.、Mm-hmm. That's- As one possible use,、mm-hmm. that would be a more informal use.、Um, in a coaching setting, you would、um, you would have an ongoing set of questions that would go from an outcome that the person wants all the way to、um, you know the necessary conditions for them to to sort of、mm-hmm. make that outcome happen. Right. Why do we?、Um, I want to go a little bit back. Why do we need a technique like this? Why are we not as As humans, why do we need to be trained in something like this? It seems,、uh, you know, I I,、um, I understand the purpose, right? But what what is it that blocks us as individuals on a、um, either as individuals or as individuals on a team? What blocks us? What、um, in, in、sure. regular communication、yeah. skills? 
Yeah, I totally understand. I think it's it's because um, as humans, and particularly now with the pace of of development and the way we um, we busy ourselves, that we we our brains make shortcuts, and it's easier and more natural for us to make assumptions about what is meant than to take the time to get clarification. Mm-hmm. So we do use everyday questions in the course, you know, of just natural talking. Um, however, we don't necessarily use them at the right times. Mm-hmm. So um, an interesting point is um, Mike Burroughs of the Agenda Shift community, um, who, founder of this community, who has his own model for helping organizations to improve, um, has his motto, which is everyone is able to work consistently at their best. And there are three sub bullets, but one of them is how having the right conversations, the right people at the best possible moment. Mm -hmm. So my thinking is, is that we often speak over each other and we, you know, we create stories uh, like user stories in our agile teams. Sometimes that where the team hasn't bothered to check into every um, word that's being used or every assumption. So I think the main purpose at least in tying it back to software development, is to help teams get curious and be engaged. And the other aspect is that they can also help you get out of drama situations, so Mm -hmm. situations of conflict. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I want to talk about the uh, application in, 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 in the Agile world here in a little bit. You are offering uh, workshops um, around this, and I think one of them is uh, upcoming in, in the Boston area. Um, when is that? Yes, um, so it's very exciting for me that um, I was able to invite and, um, and get consensus from Caitlin Walker, who, who has done the most work in organizations. Um, and she's coming over from Liverpool, England to co-train this course with me. Um, I'm really her apprentice and um, trying to become expert as she has been using this for about 15 years. Uh-huh. More. And that's going to be on April 16th and 17th, uh, 2018 in Boston. Awesome. You also say on your website where you have more information about these workshops that some of these workshops would be better applied in very short intervals, but with more frequent intervals rather than in one setting. Um, why is that? Right. Well, that's my company page at connectionsatwork.com. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's just a sampling of, of what I do, but I custom, I can build custom workshops. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I put that there because I think most organizations find it very hard to pull their people away from work for longer than four hours or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, um, but the two hour in person, I mean, the two day in person training in Boston is, um, Much more is really, it's, it's really the better way to learn clean rather than to doing it, mm-hmm. you know piecemeal yeah all right let's talk about a little bit about the application in the in the agile world where do you see clean language be an, an integral part in 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 any kind of agile environment let's just stick to that in an agile process of your choice where do you think it could help teams to improve the way of how they communicate in particular well we could start probably very appropriately with leadership teams mm-hmm. uh, I think um, that's one place that I have spent only a small part of the time over the past few years. Um, And um, I believe that there's often not really clear and crisp alignment in how the leaders um, uh, guide the vision for a product. So I would say product alignment Mm -hmm. and leadership um, can benefit from doing um, doing a bit of clean inquiry mm-hmm. on um, what exactly it is that they would like um, and to develop attributes and consequences and find resources for how all of that is going to happen. Mm-hmm. And by resources, I don't just mean, you know, physical resources and human bodies. I mean, um, you know, creating the conditions for people who are doing the work right. uh, to, to, to be taken care of and have their own working needs met. Yeah. Well, you mentioned earlier um, something about user stories, right? Um, what about what about um, you know like things 
people or listeners on that podcast probably are very used to, like, let's say, product backlog, sprint planning, um, daily scrum, um, and so forth. Are there any application of uh, where you would say clean language could have a big impact? Um, absolutely. You've mentioned some of them. Um, uh, you can use it in product design. You can use it in stand-ups to set your daily, um, you know, to get clarification on the daily needs and so forth. I think what's, um, you know, it's, it's up to your imagination to dream of where this could be used once you know the simple set of questions. But I think across the board, the place that I think it will help is with engagement with participation mm -hmm. because, and here's the reason why, um, have you ever been in a meeting where you've been reluctant to sort of ask the question, ask a question mm -hmm. because, um, you know, you don't want to be seen as being dumb mm -hmm. or not in the loop or not aware. Well, what happens when you instill a culture of clean into your teams and into your company is that you get um, you you get this permission to ask any question that's clean. So, and if you think about it, the the possibilities are endless because even though it's a set of twelve questions, what you put the words that you put into the question don't have to make grammatical sense. Mm -hmm. Now that might seem really strange. They don't have to make grammatical sense. So if I'm saying um, uh, something like, um, well, this project is going to be late. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the fir your first reaction might, as a supervisor, might be, oh, no, and, you know, you might get flustered or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, um, but if, you're, if you're speaking to a report who's responsible for you know, doing some of the work and has reasons for it, you might want to be really open and clean and asking some, some, you know, questions about what kind of late mm -hmm. where, and where does late come from? Mm -hmm. Sounds like a strange question. Like you could just use normal conversation, but the clean questions allow anybody to ask any question of any word. Mm -hmm. um, and what's, kind of fun, there's a fun aspect to it too, which is that um, it trains people in how to look for and listen to metaphorical language. And um, when you do that, and when you inquire about people's metaphors, you learn a whole lot about their beliefs and, um, and behaviors, and you become sort of more um, connected in a way. Mm -hmm. Ah, oh, this is super interesting. How could it be used in like in written communication, such as the user story you just mentioned, right? How would um, like I see a lot of ambiguity on the um, in the written and on the on a, on a user story. Could a clean yeah. could clean language be applied for that as well? Sure. There's a great uh, video uh, done by a British um, coach named Damien Crawford where he he did a meetup where he was uh, training people in clean language, and he put a, puts a user story up. Um, on the board and he gives the questions to the people in the audience and he says, okay, ask away what clean questions can you ask of this user story? Mm -hmm. And um, it's absolutely fabulous. So every single word in the user story, you know, shell um, is examined. And is there anything else about drop down? And is there anything else about color? And is there anything else about, I, I forget what the, the yeah. uh, core of it was. Yeah, no, definitely. But, you know, asking those questions, right, very often reveals quite some misunderstandings among the team members, um, I would assume. Uh, at least that is, that is what I'm experiencing myself. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, there's one more point I wanted mm -hmm. to make about that, sure. uh, um, which is uh, something that was brought out in this video of, that Damien did, which is that, by having the team ask the questions of the product owner during the planning, it puts the onus back on the product owner for getting clarity in that meeting, as opposed to waiting until you're halfway through a sprint and, and not having, um, you know, clarity at that point. Right. 
And so, um, yeah. Yeah. So as far as I understand, there are two uh, branches of clean language. One is for um, individuals and one is for teams. Um, you're focusing on the teams part as far as I understand and uh, that yep. is also the area of uh, clean language for, for agile teams I would assume. Um, what, why, did, why the separation between the two? It's also helpful to learn the, the um, clean language uh, for individual coaching mm -hmm. um, because the skills that you learn there will also play into um, your skills as a facilitator when you're training teams. The reason that I'm most interested in the, uh, the clean for teams and organizations is um, that that's where I, that's where my background has been. I've been in IT since mm -hmm. uh, 1991 and, um, and I find that it's a very compelling extra communication tool that um, companies could um, take advantage of. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you a little story. There aren't very many companies doing this. However, um, there's a small company in England, smallish technology firm, um, that was lucky enough to be exposed to clean and get clean training um, 15 years ago. And the owner, who's a friend of mine now, uh, Simon Coles, um, is quite convinced that the reason that he has been able to far surpass his, um, his competitors has been that he has hired using clean language, he uses it in interviews, he uses it in his sales, um, telephone calls, and so forth. Mm -hmm. because, because when you're training your attention on the other person and you have all of your employees able to do that and be super attentive, you've really, you know, checked off a lot of the, the needs for presence, engagement, curiosity, and collaboration. Mm -hmm. Well, that is super helpful to have a, a, a metric and, and a true actual factor of improvement of some soft skill like this. Very often soft skills are hard to measure, right? So this is a great um, case for measuring the effectiveness of this uh, technique. Um, where, where else do you see an application? I just want to, because this is probably something for an agile coaching guild, right, around the world. This is uh, a technique for agile coaches, for scrum masters, for team members, leaders, and so forth. Um, where do you see clean language maybe like in, yeah. in other things, such as outside of like the, the typical agile um, events, uh, like discovery, oh, yes. open space. Um, is, there, is there any application where you see that the technique could help and improve even further? Uh, the, the, the applications, Johan, they're endless. Um, and um, some of the ones that I think are very compelling, um, for example, service industries like doctors, who mm -hmm. perform, you know, their, their um, specialized services, there's, um, I think Tom Peters has a YouTube out there that says doctors on average interrupt um, their patients while their patients are describing their symptoms on average after only 18 seconds. Wow. wow. And when they ask questions, and, and then they give the diagnosis. So um, there are, the NHS in England is um, starting to have a whole bunch of clean uh, language um, consultants help them out as well. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen it used in um, police departments. There's a branch of clean called clean interviewing. And when police interview witnesses, they often ask questions which um, lead, um, maybe unbeknownst to the police, lead them, lead their witnesses to answer in a way that is not um, uh, clean. In other words, they've been influenced on um, and might be unaware of it. So it's been used um, to train police to not do that. Um, it's been used uh, to change a culture of a whole um, uh, school in England from top to bottom. Yeah. So even within an organization, many, many places, elementary school teachers are using it to help children become more autonomous and to, to um, hold each other to their own learning needs. It's mm -hmm. there's a book there's a book specifically about that. Um, so lots and lots of uses. Yeah. Well, I definitely take that as uh, my own personal homework here away with me because um, I do work uh, 
actually, we, we are currently working with the uh, school um, on implementing agile principles and see how we can even improve that even uh, further. Now, with your, with your um, examples of things that would be potential, right, and uh, where you could see the application of all these things and things actually where it happens, who, who attends these workshops right now? Um, like what, what kind of an audience do you have? I would assume it's not all agile coaches and so forth, right? Um, or, or even from um, people in, in the Liverpool area. Where do we, where, what happens uh, uh, in terms of audience? Who's, who's attending those? Who wants to learn this currently? Yeah, so, um, so the, work, the work that I'm following on the team side um, th and uh, I guess there are people all over the world who are going to Liverpool to get trained. I am the first person in the U.S. to be um, really following this branch of clean language. And uh, of the people who have signed up for the Boston training, um, we have people in community um, service, an NVC, nonviolent communication trainer who's intrigued by clean language. Um, we have... We have a couple of agile coaches, um, and I'm forgetting the rest. But I mean, yeah. it's it's a pretty varied um, uh, 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 clientele there, mm -hmm. um, and so it's really just launching. Um, and I'm really eager to get the word out there because um, the more I spread it, the more I realize yes, there is demand for this kind of simple but effective tool to help people connect with each other and to be um, less judgmental. Mm -hmm. Goodness knows we need that, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I think you're, you're really um, hitting the mark here um, at the end of our, of our conversation here. I, I do hope that Agile FM can be a part of you spreading the word a little bit more. I hope that uh, Agile FM can also be a uh, a medium for you to create more joy in the workplace. I think that's much needed, right? We are very um, busy. I'm not saying necessarily effective, but uh, we definitely can always use a little bit more extra joy uh, when we come to work. Maybe that technique, maybe this helps a little bit spread the word and hopefully you get uh, good attendance for, for your workshop, but also not for this one, but also just in general, um, just a lot of interest. Um, I want to say thank you, Andrea. Um, just one more time, the Twitter handle in, in case people want to uh, connect with you, Andrea, C-H-I-O-U, that's your Twitter handle. Your website is connections-at-work.com. I just want to thank you for, um, for, for the time you just had uh, talking about this topic. It's very important and uh, good luck uh, to you with everything and I myself have a little bit of homework to do. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Johan. I really appreciate it. There is one other resource for Agile Coaches, which is called cleanagilecoaching.com. Awesome. And you can sign up for my newsletter and uh, watch a bunch of video recordings about clean for teams. Fantastic. And we'll make that link available on the show page as well. Thank you so much. Okay. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Agile FM, the radio for the Agile community. I'm your host, Joe Krebs. If you're interested in more programming and additional podcasts, please go to www.agile.fm. Talk to you soon.